Welcome back to SnowRunner guys, and in this video we are going to be taking a look at Lime's Mudcat. Now, you guys have seen this truck on my streams a few different times, and basically what's been really cool about this rig is that I've gotten to watch a lot of the development on it, and I've gotten, gotten to drive it through a lot of its different stages of development, and so thankfully we're actually able to have it here now, out here on the Sling Valley Mud Park map, in its public sort of release form. Now, also, even though it is based loosely on a first-generation Cadillac Escalade, in theory, it could be console-friendly, supposedly, uh, because of the fact that it doesn't have any badging on it, and there have been several visual areas of the body that have also been adjusted. So, with that being said, who knows what'll happen in the future, but it's definitely one that we're gonna keep an eye on. Now, it also has a really interesting paint job, and you can find out more information about the development and the paint job and the team that worked on this vehicle at the mod.io page linked in the description down below. Now, engine-wise, our stock engine is already at an S+, but, I mean, it's not really even all that stock. It already makes 475 horsepower. Then you can go up to the built engine, which is crazy because your 950 horsepower tune is in the middle. Like, they're like, oh yeah, that's like the, the middle one, the average one. Don't worry about that one. And then... Your bulletproof engine is, as Limes always likes to include, basically he says that that one is way more powerful than anybody would ever need, and run at your own risk, pretty much. The bulletproof engine is definitely a run at your own risk package. Now, if I'm looking for a really, really fun experience, and I don't necessarily want to flip over all the time, usually I'll go with the built engine, but if I want to go absolutely wild, I'll go with the bulletproof. For now, I think I'm going to go with the built, because it is still very, very fast, and also the speed of it has a lot to do with what gearbox you pick. Speaking of gearboxes, you have the stock 5-speed, the 5-speed that's low-geared for crawling, then you have the 9-speed transmission, which is best for top speed, and then you have a 4-speed race transmission if you're planning on using this thing on a track, or like a uh, kind of a dirt-type track with jumps and stuff like that. The race trans is definitely the one I would use for that kind of application. So we're going to go with the fast transmission, the 9-speed for this one. And then suspension-wise, the race tune is weird because it goes up and there's two different race tunes this is the actual race tune this is more of the lifted tune which i'm not quite sure why it still says race tune uh i'm sure that's something limes will address in the future and then you have the standard one that's in the middle now usually with limes trucks the middle suspension is usually the one that's the most balanced and the one that's least likely to flip over on you and if you want to stuff some gigantic tires underneath it you can go for the high option but for this build i think i'm going to go with the uh the middle option and then in the future Future, potentially on a stream we'll use the race option so now tires wise you have these bkt tractor tires which are really really good but the actual range of tires to choose from is tremendous now as you can see the wheels also change as you go through the different tire types and i love how these for example are these deep dish chrome wheels, but with a full beadlock, so they actually are properly effective in the mud. Now, these wheels, I haven't actually seen these wheels on a lot of different rigs, or at least not a lot of different mud rigs before, and they're really, really interesting looking. I like the tire types, too. Kind of like a, almost like a uh, checkmark tire, like an agricultural tire. Really dig it. Now we get into more of a swamper style tire. And then, oh my god, those can get really big. And then this is similar to some of the tires we saw before, but with another deep dish beadlocked wheel. Which is also, though, not the same one, and it has a different spoke design, and I believe a different beadlock ring as well. And these are the ones I'm actually going to go with. Not the... Well, let's see. Let's see how these look. Oh, those look so good. Oh my god, those look amazing. Now... You can, like I said before, you can keep the design that it has on it right now, which is really, really cool. We probably will keep it. Uh, or you can switch to a solid color of your choosing. Now, it does have a full range of colors, and all of the colors actually show up pretty true to how they look in the color selector, which is nice. Because some trucks, the color shade doesn't always match what it shows up as in the color selector. So, I'm really glad that, uh, that he really kind of put the time into making these colors show up correctly. And I really like, actually, I really like it in green. We're going to run it in the design, the base design, but I really like it in green, like I said before. All right, so let's go ahead and take it out of the garage now and see what this thing looks like and see how it drives. And by the way, I love that wheel choice. I think those wheels look so good on this thing. Let's fire it up. 
It's so easy to make this thing do wheelies. It is so ridiculously easy. Like, look. Let's see. There you go. Oh. <laughs> oh my god. Alright, we're gonna put the we're gonna put the top engine in it real quick. Because with that one, it will literally wheelie on command. Let's see. Oh, maybe not. There's a little bit of a trick to getting it to wheelie like that. Sometimes it'll do it. Sometimes it'll do it, sometimes it won't do it. I'm not sure quite what the trick is to that. But like I said before, Diesel Addict has been able to make this thing wheelie everywhere. So I think it's all... Oh, there it is. You back up in automatic mode, ironically enough. Oh. Yep. Oh, there it is. There's the trick to making it wheelie. Oh, that's so cool. That is so wild. That is so incredibly wild. Oh. All right, I'm gonna see if I can make it do it correctly here. Oh no, I didn't transfer the momentum properly. You have to transfer the momentum perfectly. There it is. Oh. Well, you can get it to wheelie up so far if you time it right. You can get it to wheelie up so far that it literally will, um... Hey, what the heck? Why won't it... Why won't it quick winch? Oh, God. Why won't it quick winch? Ah! Come on, pull it back down. I should have backed up. There you go. There we go. All right, we need to go ahead and load this thing on a trailer so we can get it out to the mud bogs. And... Oh, there it goes, trying to wheelie again. We could just drive it out there, but I think it would be a lot more fun to just have it on a trailer. So let's go ahead and drop back into the garage, go back into the truck store, and I think for this one, we are going to go ahead and use the 3500 dually, which really, I mean, for this application, is going to work absolutely perfectly. So we're going to throw the lift on it, and really, at the end of the day, this, this rig is not all that heavy, so I don't even think we're going to need to put the... Um, to put the heavyweight bumper on this thing. Now, I'm not actually gonna run the stacks this time because when I did my initial test, I ran it with the stacks. And on this one, I'm gonna run it without the stacks just to kind of see how it looks that way. It's definitely gonna look a little bit more, a uh, little bit more like an OEM plus kind of setup, which is really nice with trucks like this. So whether or not you run the stacks is completely up to you when you drive this truck. So let's see, where is the, Whoop. Let's see, long goose neck. I'm gonna run the long goose neck simply due to the fact that it's also wider. And I kinda need the width for the uh, for the width of the axles on the Escalade. So, I'm gonna run the long goose neck. We're gonna pull it around. And we'll go ahead and get loaded up. There we go. All right, let's go ahead and pull up and stop. We'll get those ramps down. And I'm actually gonna go ahead and change the suspension mode. I'll raise the airbags in the back. So we're gonna go ahead and grab the Mudcat. We'll load it up. And then we will be heading out to the mud pits. Repair and refuel. Good to go. Oh, get, oh my god. Why are, Why was I in manual reverse? That was not what I intended on doing. I'm really glad we picked the wide trailer. Yeah, I'm really glad we picked the wide trailer. We would have needed it. We really would have needed it. Now, this is a lot of trailer for one rig. But I gotta tell you, like, I'm not mad about it. I'm definitely not upset about the fact that we're using this entire trailer for just that one rig. All right, it gets packed super well. Fire this guy back up. We'll get the ramps up, and then we will be on our way, I think. There we go. If the ramps want to work properly, we'll be on our way. Wow, what a setup. Now, what's really cool about the exact setup that we have on screen right now is not only the fact that both of these rigs are basically fully console friendly. I mean, obviously, they're going to need to get approved and stuff like that as far as, you know, as far as when I'm recording this, these still haven't been approved, but they are, like I said before, console friendly models. Now, one of the other things that's super cool about this is this is a setup that I could genuinely see, you know, realistically showing up at an off-road park. Like, there's really nothing about this entire setup right now that I feel is unrealistic, which I think is really cool. Like, when you get to look at a setup and you're like, yeah, I could genuinely see that, you know, believably showing up at an off-road park, and I could see it showing up at really almost any off-road park. Now, the front axle is getting pulled off the ground just a little bit, but not enough to where it's a big deal yet. I am really glad that we have that uh, that air suspension in the back, though, because now that we've got, obviously, that extra load on the rear, 
we can go ahead and have the rear suspension up to compensate for that weight. Let's throw it in high and see if it'll take it going up this hill. Oh, it's struggling. Oh my god, it was not happy about that. I do love Sling Valley as a map, though, because it gives you this really interesting roadway approach that you can take with your friends, especially if you're in multiplayer, and it really does give you this sensation of heading out to the off-road park together, convoying out to the off-road park together with all of your, you know, your tow rigs, your, your uh, mud trucks, your off-road rigs, whatever it is that it might be, and it really does, like I said, lend itself well to that roleplay feel. So, if you're looking for a new mud map to try and you've been mostly using West Georgia Mud Park, even though West Georgia Mud Park is an incredible map, I would definitely also recommend trying out Sling Valley Mud Park if you haven't already. Wonderful map, not quite as big as West Georgia Mud Park, but it does have some obstacles that West Georgia does not have. So once again, uh, it's a really good map to add to your collection if you like some variety, especially in terms of your mud maps. So we're gonna go ahead and bypass the hill climb this time, although that hill climb is a blast. I highly recommend it if you haven't tried it before. And we're gonna go ahead and head straight into the mud park. Thank God it's open. Man, I was concerned it wasn't gonna be. All right, let's go ahead and pull up over here. All right, we got the Mudcat unpacked, and it's time to go ahead and swap over to it and see how it does in the really, really deep section. We're just going to take it straight into the deep section first because I really don't think that, like, for something like this, I know, with especially with Limes as its builder, I know for a fact it's going to do really well. Even though I haven't driven it out here before, I know for a fact it is going to do super well. And yes, we are going to finish off this test with an attempt at the backflip ramp. We're just not going to start off with it because I feel like starting off with it would be a little iffy. But we're going to line up at the main jump. We're going to hit it at full speed. Full pace right out of the gate. Three, two, one. Full send. Come on. Eighth gear. Oh my god. That flew farther than probably anything I've ever seen before. Hit that jump. That was incredible. Let me go ahead and get this thing to start back up. But, oh my god. I mean, if there was one thing, just one thing that he could adjust, maybe it would be to, like, even out the weight bias just a tiny little bit. Because I love how it stays super level in the air. But when it lands, it's super, like, rear heavy. But look at how well it just sends it through the mud. That is amazing. I mean, this thing is like, if you want to go out to any mud pit map, and just dominate the thing. Absolutely just dominate it. Look at that. That is nuts. And you can literally let off of the throttle midway through the mud pit and it doesn't matter. It straight up does not matter. Holy smokes, that is so wild. Go, 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 go. Whoop. <laughs> that is wild. Absolutely nuts. All right. Next, save that, please. Thank you. All right, next section. Now, this one is going to be kind of weird because... Wait a minute. Are you supposed to be able to... No. No. I, I doubt that that's what you're supposed to be able to do, but... I'm going to hit that at full speed and see if I can clear both ramps. It's probably not going to go well for me, but... Do a barrel roll. Yep, all good. That meant to. That's how you. Uh, that's how you slow down. Uh, when you lack good enough brakes, that's how you slow down. It's fine. All right, we're gonna send it back the other way. Oh no! Why did it downshift all the way to first on me? That was weird. Fifth, sixth, seventh. Left the jump on seventh. Ooh! Ooh! That was real bad. I was really hoping that we were going to make the second rotation, but that was not a reality. Holy crap, that did not end up becoming a reality. So, we're going to send it off this main jump here, and I'm sure it'll be able to manage that because that is a very, very, very easy lip to jump off of. Oh, yeah. Super simple. Oh, there it is. That save, though. Leaving the jumps in high is a little sketchy because it makes them a little uneven. Oh, come on. God, even in stuff like that, which is really thick in, like, any other rig, is honestly, like, super simple in this. Super simple. 
What about these mud drag lanes? This, I bet it'll do really well. All right, three, two, one, go! What? What? Oh, wow. Okay, that's genuinely incredible. That is... I... I haven't seen anything just rip through those like that before. That was tremendous. And if you guys enjoyed this video and this look at this vehicle, make sure to let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. Hit that like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Turn those notifications on. And I will see you guys next time.